The issue and topic of abuse has been one that has been pretty raging in our culture, in the church, from Me Too to now. And it's had a significant impact on how the church has engaged this topic. And so what do you think are some helpful, prudent measures that that pastors, church leaders should take in helping to actually prevent abuse happening in uh, in the church? Yeah, so, and specifically, you're talking about um, church abuse, pastoral abuse, yeah. things of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So, because, as we know, that term is widely applied to all kinds of really broken sure. situations. And I think the, the, the church abuse, the authority abuse, is, is a real thing that we need to reckon with. And so I think the first thing is just having an understanding of what exactly are we talking about? Um, because I think most pastors, like myself, had no uh, training or background in terms of what, what is the abuse of power and how uh, do we reckon with that? Or for that matter, what is the power that I actually have and how can I steward that well? Um, that wasn't a question that was being asked when I was in seminary. The question was, how can we help grow the church? We can reach the nations. We can go, 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 go. And sometimes in that haste and that desire for movement, um, we can take shortcuts. And one of the big shortcuts is uh, using power in a way that doesn't allow people to flourish. So I think understanding what that is, and in our, our church in particular, like we've spent our whole last elder retreat just learning about um, spiritual abuse. What does it look like? What isn't it? Because it also can be used um, in ways that aren't helpful in terms of the, the category. Uh, and then reckoning with, so what, what does that look like? And so I think a number of things practically could be in place and some things that we've implemented, um, have been implementing and we continue to implement them in, uh, in new ways. One is we just instituted a policy that every one of our directional team members, so people who oversee teams, are gonna receive a 360 degree evaluation every year so that at least once a year we have a way for staff uh, members to voice concerns if they have them so there's a mechanism for us to say hey this is going on because sometimes spiritual abuse is happening um, and the person who's in position of power has no idea how they're being uh, received or felt and if they knew it they would have opportunity to maybe adjust and change and in other cases um, the person who's feeling um, oppressed if you will doesn't know where's the venue where's the safe place for me to go hey this this is a bit much or this is really affecting me so that's one thing another is i think for senior leaders know what the accountability structures are um, so in uh, my case for instance we have we have 40 elders and among those elders i have three elders that we call our lead pastor accountability team and so those are guys that i meet with on a monthly basis speaking into my life they're also the ones who do my uh, annual evaluation and um, have a good pulse with our, our staff as to what's going well or what isn't. And then I think finally is having just a, an understood um, pathway that if there's a concern that somebody has, that um, they can be able to voice those concerns um, so that issues can be raised when they need to, when they, be, when they need to be raised. And then I'll, I'll add one more. I think it's also just recognizing as a senior leader that sometimes our voice in a meeting or in a board room or in whatever meeting we are carries more um, weight than maybe what we even realize. And so it's learning, and this is hard. I've tried to learn this, I'm still working on this, to be more quiet, to not speak first, to let things play out. And um, that's, I think, a helpful practice, but one I think that we need to continue to be leaning into. Um, because again, how do you use power is a, a bit of a relative question based upon the person's gifting, the situation that they're in, um, and those uh, those sorts of things. So that's how, how I'm thinking about it. I'm curious um, what, you know, from your decades of ministry experience, how has this conversation changed and what adjustments are you making? I mean, key, key points. I'm affirming everything that you just said, starting with we actually are not trained for this from a seminary standpoint. Now, maybe things are changing now because the landscape is changing, but, um, you know, 23, four years ago in seminary, this was not uh, a topic of conversation or instruction. Uh, so a few things that you said that I think are key. One, accountability. Knowing as leaders 
And as the church knowing, well, what is the accountability structure here? Right. That uh, you mentioned 360 review process for all of your for all of your leaders, having process in place so congregants know, right, who's accountable to whom when there is an issue, who do I who do I who do I go to uh, and, and having clarity there. The, uh, the only thing I would add, and maybe this is included in what you said, but you didn't say explicitly being able to get outside help. Mm. Uh, because there's also a trust factor that is involved when you're dealing with uh, an abuse of power situation that we have got, uh, we've got training from organizations that help churches and other types of organizations know to how to identify mm -hmm. where abuse is happening, how to prevent it, so that, so that you have, as a leadership, are constantly engaged, and not as a kind of one time, okay, we did the training, <laughs> you know, a year ago, we've got everybody trained, know that we've got a way of continually engaging these things well for, um, for our church and our congregation. Last thing I will say, um, and this is, this is hard, there isn't going to be a way to do it perfectly. Mm -hmm. That as much as, as grievous as it is, there will still be cases of abuse spiritually and otherwise in Christ's church until he returns. This is not in any way to diminish or to, uh, to say we don't deal with it forthrightly, but that's why we have to also have the kinds of accountability processes in place so we can see it and react to it when it happens even though we've tried to do preventative things, those things should make us more equipped to be able to see and deal with it when it does happen yeah. uh, and come alongside those who have been victimized by, by that abuse. Yeah, so, that's good. Yeah.